What's the latest with stadium, stadium expansion? Are you guys going to be moving forward with that? We're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing them as hard as I can possibly push them. And, um, yeah, we're still studying the north end zone. They've started looking at some preliminary designs. Some have been out there. Um, those aren't the final designs. But uh, I'm looking for excellence. And I want to make sure that in the north end zone, that um, whatever we do, it is a 50, you know, 75 year project. I want to make sure it's exactly like we want it. Not that, you know what, this will be good to do for right now. And then in, you know, 10 years, we'll come back and tear something down. I want to overall how that's going to happen in the north end zone so that it gives our fans the best north end zone experience we possibly have. And that would be for so, seating, for boxes, for a new scoreboard, for locker room movement. That would be all encompassing of all those everything things. Everything you just said. Now, our, when you talk about seating now, we're not talking about adding numbers. We're not talking about expanding the capacity of our, of our facility, or, of, our, of our arena, excuse me, of our football stadium. We're talking about just a higher level seat in some areas, suites, club level, and then also a better experience also for the guys sitting on the front row. I mean, is there information suggesting you have that kind of demand right now? That's what we're studying right now. Okay. Is that it's already full, so and we've sold more scholarship tickets, our high-level tickets, other than suites. We've sold more of those this year than we've ever sold in the history of Auburn. So there's demand for some premium seating. It's just, you know, where is that? Is that is that you know is that something between what we currently have in a suite, or is it something just a step below what we currently have in scholarship seats? But you have more of a social atmosphere. That's what we're looking at. What we're looking at is what can we do to get young alumni involved in buying tickets and start creating that experience that they'll want to bring their children to every year. We've already done. You know, the first step of that is we built the the, the largest video board in college football. That's going to make kids want to come to ball games and parents bring them. Some parents want to come and see it. So we're trying to create those experiences and continue those experiences for the Auburn family so they'll continue to buy tickets for years and years. With that scoreboard, Jay, is there just some initial projections as far as now that you have a video board compared to the old board where advertising was more permanent? Now with a video board, it's going to be more cyclical, I would imagine. You have more opportunity to cycle through and change some things up. Oh, absolutely. Is there projections for what the increased revenue of the video board compared to the old scoreboard is and was? There, there, as of right now, there's not. You know, when we did when we did our redid our our multimedia rights deal with IMG, we got one of the best deals in the country. That is coming up in the next year. And so we'll begin to talk about that now that we've invested in this new video board. Is you know what does that mean? How do we monetize that? But, but we're not as interested in that as we are the overall game day experience for our fans. We're not going to fill it up with a lot of ads and take away from the fan experience. There's a tight balance there. But at the same time, as you pointed out, James, it's an unbelievable uh, video board that can help drive some revenue for marketing. Tell me a little bit more about the football facility you talked to Brandon about earlier. Just kind of what you want to do with that, where you would put it, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten that far. Brandon yeah. Brandon saw um, through doing some some diligence on his own that. You know, possible you know renovation of the current athletic complex. That's our vision. You know, Just to renovate existing stuff. Right. Well, okay. one of both. We, you know, our, our, we we have it on the list because um, you know we do our strategic planning every year um, in all five areas of our goals, and one of them is facilities. And you know, I just keep pushing on all our facilities, and we've done a great job with soccer track, golf, tennis, indoor practice facility, the basketball arena. We just got to keep moving. And so one is, okay, we moved in this building in 1989. 1989, you know, college athletic department looks a lot different. And we had one academic counselor and zero compliance people in 1989. Now we've got, you know, rooms full of those people, which our student athletes have to have to support them at the highest level. So what is the best thing to do? Is the best thing to renovate our athletic complex? Or is it to have a football facility? But we're talking years down the road. The, you know, the number one thing on our mind right now, from a facility standpoint, is a is a is a medical facility, a training facility, because we've got to get out of our current um, old coliseum, which is still housed our, our training room for most of our Olympic sports. We've got to replace that somewhere. So we're talking to um, different people, including VCOM and uh, Dr. Andrews and uh, the Houston Clinic, about how can we have a state of the art medical facility for our student athletes. That's still a couple years down the road. So that would be the first thing. Would that be like baseball, just for other sports? Like the one by the baseball stadium? It would be, yeah, the same concept, but just bigger and better. Okay. To accommodate all student Certainly. athletes.